Jahan, good Hello. morning. How's it going? <laughs> How are you doing today? Pretty good. Awesome, awesome. And uh, today is Friday, April 9th. Thank you for joining us uh, for our co-founder sessions from Sommelier. And it is a pleasure to have you with us. And I am going to just kick us off with our first question. So uh, you are one of the rock star co-founders of Sommelier uh, that just recently launched. Uh, tell us, who are you, Jahan, and how do you get into crypto? Um, I, I actually don't have the, the same background that a lot of people uh, in, in crypto or tech do. I, I didn't actually go to school for computer science or anything. Um, I, uh, I studied- You went to school for construction. Well, I, I did. I worked construction. <laughs> I worked construction before, uh, before, actually before I went to college. Um, oh, wow. Okay. For, for a few years. Yeah, because I, was, I wasn't sure what I wanted to study. I ended up studying industrial design, um, and uh, but then I, I dropped out and started making WordPress sites. Um, that's all a very long time ago now. Um, so I, uh, I got into crypto in probably 2013, 2014. Um, I had a, I had a good friend who was into crypto and he helped me buy my first 100 Litecoins. Nice. Um, <laughs> went at, uh, at three dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I went to the ATM and got out like I might have been two dollars. Got like 200, 200 bucks in cash, and and he he went on like you know whatever the exchange was at the time that had Litecoins and bought some for me. Um, actually, actually, uh, I worked. I earned three bitcoins back then too, and then I forgot Ooh. the forgot the password. No so, way. <laughs> yeah. So uh, those were, that was like three hundred dollars at the time. So I, it was yeah. Cool. But um, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so so I got into crypto, and and um, I had been working um, before that as as from that WordPress site. I, I moved on to doing um, JavaScript uh, front end back end development. Um, so that was kind of my wheelhouse. Um, and then I, I got into uh, into crypto, and um, I, uh, I I was uh, Ethereum was coming out at that time too. Um, and I was very, uh, interested in what Ethereum allows you to do, um, because everybody was hyping Bitcoin at the time, talking about how Bitcoin script would let you program stuff, but Bitcoin script is terrible for programming stuff. So, right, um, right. It's, it's incredibly limited. So I was like, wow, Ethereum actually does what everyone is hyping Bitcoin for. So that, uh, that, that really got me into Ethereum. And so I was, um, mm. You know, writing solidity and or not solidity at the time, but sort of following the programmability. Serpent. Yeah, that stuff, that early stuff. Um, even before Ethereum was launched. Um, and um, I was also a little bit involved in in, in Tendermint and um, no, it wasn't Cosmos at the time, but I was kind of following right. the development of that because I had friends who were working on it. Um, but yeah, in uh, in about in in 2015, I started. Um, you know, I was for, for work, I was just working as a contractor. And so I could uh, sort of uh, work, work sometimes and then take some time off and stuff. And so in my time off, I was um, started working on a project called Althea. Um, mm -hmm. And that was around 2015. And, and I had been um, at a local hackerspace pseudo room, I had been participating in, in a mesh net um, meetup where we were trying to wire up uh, or not wire wireless, mm -hmm. you know, put, put a mesh net up in Oakland. And I thought that if you could right. incentivize this, with crypto, that would be perfect. Um, and so yeah. I, I was working on Althea um, and I came up with, in 2015, I came up with an early kind of um, white paper for it, which had some gaps, but was sort of the general outlines of, of what we're doing now. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, I I then, um, I think maybe in 2016 or something, I, I saw that uh, a guy called Justin Kilpatrick was working on the same kind of stuff. Um, in fact, he had been working on it even in 2014. Um, and so he is starting back up. Um, and I, I subscribed to his subreddit. I joined his IRC channel. Um, <laughs> and I started messaging him. Um, and so we, we started working together um, on it. And we, we took we decided to take the name Althea because um, he was calling it HawkNet. Um, so right. I thought Althea right. was, Hawk was, Networks. rolls off the tongue a little nicer. but. Um, so we started working together, um, and we we started the um, you know we we started the Althea project, and uh, so we worked together to uh, fill up the holes in the white paper and publish the first white paper. Uh, we posted that in early 2017 awesome. on the Ethereum subreddit, which at the time yeah. was the main venue for Ethereum discussions, um, yeah. and. Um, 
I went I went and did some talks. Uh, I went to a talk at uh, at a MeshNet conference in Europe. Um, and uh, Deborah, um, our other co-founder of Althea and now the CEO, um, she uh, was watch, she watched that on YouTube and she got in touch with us because she wanted to start an Althea network in her town. And right. so right. Um, we uh, let's see. And so in, 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 in late 2017, we raised some money. I forget actually when Deborah first got started. She probably got started during 2017 on the okay. ground. Um, and we, we basically um, helped Deborah, who was at the time not an employee or anything yet, uh, helped her set up a network in her town in Oregon, Klatsk and I. And um, then, uh, and so, so she was setting up radios and stuff and, and she wasn't running a actual software, which wasn't done yet, but, but she was sort of running a very uh, basic kind of test platform where you're using it to test various parts of it. And so um, in early 2018, we, uh, we raised some money. Um, and so we were able to bring um, so Justin and, and Deborah were able to come on full time. We hired Deborah. Uh, we hired Deborah as a customer support um, representative, or or sort of, or, or you know, sort of um, on the ground person for about a month. And we decided that we have to promote her to COO. Um, so because uh, she because she kicks ass, obviously. So she does. Um, yeah. So yeah, then we um, yeah, and we started. Uh, so so we had we had some money. We hired some employees to start working on the low level code that runs on the routers. Um, Justin yep. spearheaded that, of course. Yeah. Um, as the CTO, um, I was the CEO, and um, we we worked on it for a while. Um, and we were always pushing it to Deborah's network and Klatsk and I to test it. Um, yep. We, you know, we we had a lot of people reach out to us from around the world wanting to start their own networks. Um, and obviously it, it, they, they had varying degrees of, of success. It's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's kind of like starting a business. So um, we had some interesting adventures. We went to Colombia and set up a network in, in, in Medellin, uh, which was pretty yeah. cool. Wow. Um, you guys went to Latin America. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, we set up a network in the, um, in in the uh, in, in one of the poorer parts of, of Medellin, um, and it was very very interesting there because they don't have roads. It's just all these yeah. brick uh, huts with stairways between them. The whole right. neighborhood is all on the hill with, with stairways, no right. roads. Well, there's a few roads, but like it's higher sure. up. It's just you have to walk up. Um, so that was that was pretty fun. Um, and so um, let's see. So in so yeah, I mean I'm not going to tell every, every every bit of like you know Althea, um, but in in um, in late 2019, um, I decided to, uh, to to step down as CEO and um, basically promote uh, Deborah to, to the role because we had kind of finished the software. It was pretty solidified, um, and it, it's really um, it, it was it was turning into uh, it was really about scaling, and it still is about scaling right. Um, right. Right. the growth phase. And so right. um, I decided. Yeah. Should folks think of Althea as really like a, a competitor to Helium? I think a lot of folks always ask. No, and really you're right. I should have actually probably told people more about it, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So Althea is, is basically, um, it's a way for people to, uh, to set up local um, mesh networks, local little ISPs in their town yeah. with wireless equipment. Yep. And um, end users are able to use the equipment and um, it, you you basically put money, you put stable coins right in the router, and um, that then pays all the other routers that are on the path to get you to the internet. Um, so so what that means for people on the ground is that if you're just using it, um, you just have a different way you pay your ISP bill, um, and you log into a, a screen router and router and, and and you can pay it um, with with stable coins, and for um, people who have other people, their neighbors connecting through them, they're able to earn some money. Um, Got it. So that's great. So that incentivizes people to who have um, property, which is good for uh, connecting other people. For instance, if they have a high building or if they're high up on a hill, it incentivizes them to set up nodes. Um, that's the yeah. basic principle of Althea. Yeah, yeah. And 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 how did Althea enter into the cosmos? You know, what was the main uh, you know connector that brought Althea into the cosmos, and and then of course into gravity? Well, when we started, we were running on Ethereum. And um, we, uh, we, it was fine back then too. Um, the fees were really low. Um, now it's totally non-viable, of course. Um, <laughs> but uh, we were <laughs> literally running, it through, but, but from the earliest time, we had always wanted to use payment channels. And right. um, the thing with payment channels though, is that if you use a hub and spoke system, 
um, where it's being routed through many different channels that actually requires, it's like, it requires a lot of, uh, a, a lot of programming effort to get that to work right. And it still ends up being pretty centralized most of the, most of the time. And, yeah. um, we just didn't have the capacity to build a mesh network and then also build a mesh of channels. Mm -hmm. Nobody's actually done it yet, even uh, except for the lightning network. Um, so it's, it's a pretty big job. So we realized we weren't going to have time to do that. Um, Wait, payment channels for Ethereum haven't done payment. that? Yeah, well, so nobody's, people have done hub and spoke, well, people have done like, um, I guess hub and spoke payment channels, but not like yep. network payment channels. Uh, Lightning Got Network it. is the only network payment channel. Thing network out there, payment really. channel. Got it. Um, so yeah, all the ones on Ethereum I'm aware of right now, they're, um, you basically go through one hub that the developers of the protocol are running themselves. And it's trustless, right. they can't steal your money, but um, they can censor it. Um, so. Right. We, we didn't really want to go with that. Um, and we also didn't want to build a network payment channel thing. Cause that's, that's really pretty complex. Yeah. Um, and then what we were doing for a while is we had payment channels where they were being opened directly between nodes and then our So you'd have a payment channel, each of your neighbors. What we realized with that though, is that you also have to pay a good amount of gas to reload a payment channel. And you can't just put all of your, you can't put a huge amount of money into each channel. So you never have to reload it because you're locking up a bunch of money. It's cap, you know, correct. user Capital doesn't want to have to lock up a thousand dollars just to start the internet service, even if they're getting it back. It's like, yeah. why, you know, it doesn't make sense to a normal person. So, yeah. um, so what we realized was that the, the, the single hop channels weren't really helping save much gas on Ethereum. And so we needed to probably the best thing would be to move to a cheaper blockchain. Um, and so Cosmos gives you that ability. Now, at the time, there weren't many other blockchains uh, or, you know, sort of next generation blockchains besides Ethereum out there. Now, of course, there are many Ethereum killers and stuff. Um, but Cosmos is still the only system where you have sovereignty. Um, so with with a lot of stuff, I mean, with projects like Nier and Solana and, and, and um, a lot of other projects, it's like another Ethereum. But you know, okay. they say it's faster. Maybe it's faster. Yeah. I don't know. We don't know yet because yeah. they don't have a lot of users. But mm -hmm. um, with projects like Polkadot, um, that does let you have your own chain, but you actually have to like lock up a ton of money to even be able to run chain. Um, right. And you're kind of subject to running under the rules of the um, of the overall Polkadot network. So mm -hmm. with Cosmos, though, you can start a chain and find validators, and you can you can use it and um, yeah. Uh, so, so it's, it's, you can do whatever you want. Um, you can connect through IBC to the whole cosmos network, but you don't have to. Uh, mm -hmm. so it's very flexible. You can make it do whatever you want. And that's why we, that's why we chose cosmos. Um, got it. Got it. Got it. And, and then once you chose cosmos, what inspired, you know, the, to work on the gravity bridge? Well, we needed a bridge. Um, we had been using XDI, um, which is, uh, which is like an Ethereum um, side chain, I, I guess they call it. Um, but it's it's proof of authority, which means that it's just run by some some people um, where some you dudes. got trust. <laughs> some dudes, <laughs> yeah. Um, and and so there's they're not staking money. There's no it's it's yeah. So it's it's not really a full fully trustless kind of proof of stake system. Um, and but they have a bridge. Uh, to XDAI, okay. so you can get money from Ethereum put on XDAI. We need that because it's very easy to buy uh, stable coins on Ethereum. You can do it almost anywhere in the world. Uh, right. There's every every country has some kind of Ethereum exchange. Um, so f we we need a bridge to our blockchain from Ethereum so value can get in, and that's what mm -hmm. Gravity is for. Um, so okay. uh, that that's why we started working on Gravity. Um, and we, um, you know, we, we got some we got some grants from ICF, um, Unify DAO, and um, it's generally a thing that's needed for the entire Cosmos ecosystem as well. Um, so, but but we started working on it because we needed it. Got it, got it. And I think you know, how did you you know once you started working on that, um, what are your thoughts about you know how you ended up at Similia as a co-founder, like? Um, what was the evolution between, you know, going from gravity, Althea gravity, and then to sommelier? Um, well, you know, I mean, um, I've, I've known the people involved 
yourself and, and Zaki and Jack. I've 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 known um, I've known you guys for a while. Um, and um, several years. <laughs> yeah, we um, you know, we were we were working together on um on on gravity as as Peggy JV as well earlier last year. Um, and yep. I think Sommelier is, is kind of an evolution of what can be done with with bridges. Um, mm -hmm. and right now it's kind of um you know we're focusing on the impermanent I, I guess it's not the impermanent lots exactly anymore but the uniswap use case um so providing